Hello and welcome to this section of the Chemistry Tutor. Here we're going to balance a redox reaction that's occurring in a neutral solution. A neutral solution. So it's one of those things where students, they'll study acidic solutions, they'll get pretty good at it, like we've done here, and then when we get to neutral, people just forget what to do, they don't have any idea how to handle it, and in, in a little while we'll have basic solutions which will be, you know, tricky as well. Um, so the, the thing is, is if you're going to use the ion electron method, it applies to acidic solutions and we use those extra hydrogen ions, those H pluses, floating around because we know that it's an acidic solution. Now, the way it works is, if it's a neutral solution, if, if, it, if the problem tells you it's a neutral solution, then the way you do it is you follow the same procedure pretending that it's an acidic solution. So you go ahead and you use these hydrogen ions there um, to balance it. But what you're going to find, if it's a neutral solution, is that these hydrogen ions, you know how sometimes some of them were canceling in some of the previous problems? What you're going to find is they're completely going to cancel. You're going to have some H plus ions on the left and some H plus ions on the right in your final answer, but they'll both be the same amount and they'll disappear. So because there's no excess H pluses around at the end of your answer, then it kind of is a, is a double check and it shows that, okay, this really was a neutral solution. Because don't forget, when you have H plus ions, that really means an excess of, of H plus, and that means that that's acidic. That's the definition of an acid is hydrogen ions in solution. That's what it is. We've studied all that stuff before. So the bottom line is if, you, if the, the test tells you that it is neutral then solution, then just solve it the same way we've been doing all these problems, but what you're going to find is that the H pluses are all going to disappear at the end. That's basically what you need to know. So on top of that, I'm going to give you something a little bit different. Let's say we have a problem, C2H6, and that's gas, uh, plus O2, that's gas, CO2, that's gas, plus H2O. All right. Now this is an interesting problem for a couple of different reasons, and that's why I'm doing it. I want you to work a problem that's in a neutral solution. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to say this is neutral and we're going to work it. But also, this is not a net anionic equation, right? Because you don't see ions anywhere. So a lot of students freak out and like try to figure that out. But then you realize, if you look closely, water is a molecule. It's, there's no ionic bonds in there. Those are covalent bonds. That's a, we've talked about that many times in the past. Carbon dioxide, both of those things are on the right hand side of the periodic table. So those are not ionic either. So if you put carbon dioxide into water, it doesn't dissociate, is what I'm trying to say, like sodium chloride. It doesn't make ions like that when you put them in the water solution. Oxygen gas doesn't break apart into ions whenever you put it, you know, and you, you mix it in any kind of a liquid. And then the C2H6, these organic compounds generally don't break down either. They don't break down into ions anyway. So this is really, it's a redox reaction. There is oxidation, there is reduction going on but there's no net ionic equation to really speak of because these are things that don't dissociate into ions, free, freely moving ions when you put them into water like sodium chloride might. So it's an interesting problem for that. So the, I wanted to show you that so that you can see that you can still use the same technique to balance it um, that we've been doing before. But before we get there, I think that since there's no ions anywhere and step one of our procedure is basically impossible to perform, um, I think it's instructive though to take a look at this reaction and to figure out what is oxidized and what is reduced. Uh, so that when we write our half reactions, we're going to know what's oxidized and what's reduced and, and what goes with what, for instance. Um, because, you know, for instance, here we have oxygen here, okay? And then we have CO2 and H2O. So when we write our half reactions, does the oxygen pair up with the CO2? Does, in other words, does this go with this or does this